This is our final video in the series on composition and aggregation. So in our previous videos, we sort of talked about what composition and aggregation really means from a practical perspective in the sense that we have an object with other objects. We talked about the ramifications of having objects inside of other objects and what that means for constructors, for the two string method, for the equals method. So now today we're going to talk about getters and setters, okay? So you'll notice that in our company object right here, we have this private CEO. So the CEO is an object type in and of itself. And for the getter, we're just returning the, ob the uh, instance variable, okay? And same thing for the setter. We're just doing a straight, um, you know, CEO equals O, okay? Now, the problem with doing this is this is a very similar case to what we're dealing with when we have arrays as instance variables, okay? In the sense that Java does things via references. So we have the potential to be violating some information hiding, okay? And so here's what I mean by that, all right? If I go over here to my implementation class, and let me just comment out all of this stuff here. Okay. Suppose that I was to say, all right, I'm going to create, first I'm going to create a new CEO. So I'll have CEO, um, CEO3 equals new CEO, and we'll make the CEO um, Jeff Bezos, okay? And now let's go ahead and, oh, I guess I need a salary for him too. So we'll make his salary 10,000, okay? And now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new company. So I'll do company C7 equals new company. I'll do amazon.com. Okay, and we'll do c7 dot set num employees thousand however many there are, and c7 dot set ceo ceo three. Okay, well, if I was to then go ahead and print out this uh, this company that I've just created, okay, unsurprisingly, you will see that it just prints out what you would expect there's no interesting surprises so we have amazon.com a thousand employees the ceo is jeff bezos and there's his salary okay now the problem is in terms of information hiding suppose that now that i've done this suppose that i go in here and i'm going to go ahead and change something about the ceo so i'm going to do ceo3 dot set name um, and I'm going to call him um, Harvey Whippleman. Okay. Now, you wouldn't think that just by changing the CEO's name here that I have affected this actual company, right? Because company declares CEO to be private. So I shouldn't be able to go ahead and modify this. All right, outside of the class. Yet, what you will see is if I put in another show message dialog, you will see that, in fact, that is exactly what I have done here. So my original thing of Jeff Bezos is there, but then I now have Harvey Whippleman. And I shouldn't be able to do that. I shouldn't be able to change this CEO that's declared right here and have that affect the CEO that is associated with the company. I have violated information hiding. So this is the exact same problem that we have when we're dealing with arrays as instance variables. Okay, so the way that I have to handle this is in my getters and setters, I need to actually create a copy of the CEO. Okay, and so usually the way that you do that is you create what is called a copy constructor. All right, and so here's what a copy constructor looks like. I'm gonna do public CEO, and it's going to accept a CEO argument. Okay, so I'll just call it O. 
All right, and so now what I can do is in here, I can basically create a copy of the uh, CEO object that is coming into this constructor, right? So like, for example, what I can do is I can say, all right, um, this.name is equal to O dot, well, I can just do O dot name, and this dot salary is equal to O dot salary, okay? And so what that's doing is it's saying that this new CEO object that's created when I call this constructor is going to just use the attributes from the incoming CEO object, all right? So I should be able to compile this, all right, and I can. And so now how would I use this copy constructor? Well, over in here, anytime I've got a situation where I and passing in a CEO or retrieving a CEO, that is when I would want to use my copy constructor. So in my set CEO, okay, instead of doing CEO equals O, what I can do is I can do CEO equals new CEO and then pass in the value that came in, okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm creating a copy of this CEO of, I'm. I'm creating a copy of O and putting it here in CEO. So now I should have two completely separate references, all right? And I need to do the same thing in my getter as well. So in my getter um, up here, instead of just returning CEO, what I'll do is I'll just return new CEO and I'll pass in this value. So this is called a copy constructor and it's called a defensive copy. Now, what you will see is that if I compile this, Okay, it compiles just fine. Now, if I run this, okay, what you will see, I haven't made any changes here, is that now, the first time through, I've got Jeff Bezos, and the second time through, it stays as Jeff Bezos, okay? Because even though CEO3 is now Harvey Whippleman, see, this reference CEO3 isn't the same reference here inside of the company, okay? It's now private inside of the company, and so if I wanted to get it out of the company, I would need to call the getter and then modify it that way, all right? So again, this is exactly the same as when you have arrays as instance variables, all right? There's, it's no different. In a situation where you have a composition and aggregation and you have this other object, oftentimes it is necessary to have a copy constructor inside of this um, attribute object here. So we created the copy constructor inside of CEO, all right? And then we use that copy constructor inside the getters and the setters, okay? So there's the getter, and then the setter is a little bit, oops. There's the getter, and then the setter is right here. We use the copy constructor so that information hiding isn't violated. By doing that, it makes it so that if somebody tries to modify the CEO from outside this company class, like we tried to do over here with this Harvey Whippleman thing, I'm not gonna mess up my company, okay? My company, once it's initialized and that setter is called, then I'm then it's in there. It's the CEO of Jeff Bezos in 10,000 is locked inside of that company, and I don't have the ability to modify that here outside of my class, okay? So that is, uh, that is, I guess, the last consideration that you need to think about when you're doing composition and aggregation. So we talked about two string methods, we talked about constructors, we talked about the equals method, and now lastly, we've talked about the getters and the setters and how you need to have copy constructor to create these defensive copies to prevent manipulation of your object outside of the class.